So one of the problems that I see in my weight loss clinic is that when people um, start you know, to go on a diet, try to lose weight, you know, they cut back on their carbohydrates, they cut back on their fats, but they also cut back tremendously on their protein. And I think there's an issue with that because we do need um, a good amount of protein to actually help us burn more body fat. And there are several studies that have shown that if we increase protein, you know, we keep everything else the same, people actually had a net loss of fat and a net gain of muscle without really changing other parameters. So protein is very useful, uh, it keeps you very full. And again, of all the, of the three macros, I think it's probably the most important one. Um, now, I usually recommend if someone's healthy, that means no underlying kidney disease or anything else, they can go up to 0.8 gram per pound body weight. Um, I always give this example, if you are weighing about 150 pounds, you can go up to 120 uh, grams of protein per day. Now that's actually quite a bit and you know for some people then the issue comes well how do I get that much protein in my in my diet um, and I think you know down the line if you want to avoid foods that carry a lot of fat with it and that's the issue with many protein or high protein foods like meats for example they usually carry a certain amount of fat with them um, my issues also with meats like chicken and pork that you know their fat content is not very good so if you eat chicken or pork, I would get very lean cuts because the fatty tissue, you know, we've got to remember these are monogastric animals fat with, you know, soy and corn. So they're going to have a fairly high amount of omega-6 linoleic acid in their fatty tissue, which is not really great. Um, beef, different. I mean, you know, they will um, be, be able to convert these to saturated fats. So you're going to have a lower content of omega-6 there. Um, and I would rather say go for the cheap meat or the ground beef rather than eating the you know, chicken or the pork. Uh, fish is another good source of protein, but fish unfortunately really is fairly high in heavy metals. And I always thought that's an overstatement and you know, just kind of fear mongering, but I've seen a few people that you know, when you look at their labs, they come back with very high amounts of mercury and other heavy metals. So this is not really something to take too lightly. Um, but beyond that, uh, so getting protein from meat is one thing. Then, of course, many people are vegetarian, uh, even harder. I mean, how many eggs do you have to eat to get to that protein? That's kind of insane. So that's, of course, not going to work. Um, then we can look at things like Greek yogurt, which is actually very high in protein. And, you know, when we look at something like a 2% or 0% fat Greek yogurt, you know, they have a, very, a good amount of protein in there. And that's actually very good protein. But I think no matter how you look at it, if you design your meals, I think you know, in the end, it's useful to have a protein supplement. Um, I talked about this in other videos. I usually recommend a whey protein isolate. Um, and, uh, you know, I have one currently that is actually sweetened with stevia. And I'm going to switch to something actually that has no sweetener. I did a lot of talk about sweeteners lately. Artificial sweeteners are terrible. So I would never get one that has an artificial sweetener in it. Like, you know, aspartame uh, or sucralose or saccharin, those are really bad and I would just avoid those. These sweeteners actually contribute to, to obesity, you know, um, they can cause metabolic dysfunction, they're really terrible. Um, the natural sweeteners like um, stevia, monk fruit, um, you know, allulose are probably better, but still even there with stevia, there is some you know, data that shows that it might also disrupt the, the gut microbiome. Allulose is not supposed to do it, but then again, when I talked about the production of allulose, it's made from corn. Now, corn is GMO, corn is sprayed with glyphosate, and then it's a chemical process to make the allulose. That's not ideal either. So I think it's best to forego the sweeteners altogether, go with a natural protein powder, whey protein isolate that is, um, you know, that doesn't have anything else in there. And then the way I usually do this, I will have a scoop of this in my oats in the morning. So my first meal will have like an oatmeal, like a half a cup of oats. And I put a scoop of protein powder in there and then I have some, some fruit with that, you know. Um, so that's a pretty high protein breakfast. And then I will have another shake, like one scoop for a shake in the afternoon. Now with most of these brands, a scoop is about 28 grams. So that's a decent amount of protein, extra protein you can get this way. And then, you know, you have your regular meals, which will probably have somewhere between 20 and 30 grams of protein. So I think it's a, a good way to add in um, extra protein using a whey protein isolate to get to your total daily protein needs. And it's very interesting. So first people say, man, I'm really struggling to get to my total protein. But when they've been there for a little while, you see the weight loss progress very nicely. So they feel more full. Um, and one nice thing about protein is, you know, it's, you know, it fills you up.
this satiety is excellent of it. And then you need protein, of course, you know, especially when you're working out. I always recommend resistance training. And to build lean muscle and to keep lean muscle, especially when you're dieting, uh, you need to up your protein a little bit. Um, then the question comes up, well, my primary care doctor says if I take too much protein, I'm wasting calcium, so it's bad for my bones. And that's not exactly correct. Um, so actually, it's true that when you have a high protein diet, you will have more calcium in the urine. But at a much higher rate than that, protein stimulates the reabsorption of calcium from the digestive tract. And that's actually a very good thing. So the ultimate net result, especially when you do resistance training, is usually stronger and healthier bones when you have more protein. There were some uh, studies done that showed, especially in elderly people, they will, you know, have, um, that have a very low protein diet, you know, they had issues with bone density. And, you know, osteoporosis is a real risk factor, you know, for fractures in elderly people. Um, I have seen this a lot in elderly patients. Once, uh, you know, there's fractures, especially when people are over 70 or 80, um, many, of, uh, many people really go downhill. So it's a really horrible thing to see. So preventing fractures in elderly people is very important. And, you know, we don't get there overnight. You know, we don't start, you know, suddenly wake up one morning and have bad bone density, something that builds up over time. And, um, you know, usually after you turn 30 or 35, you know, bone density decreases unless you exercise. And um, increasing protein intake and then um, resistance exercise can actually stimulate your bone to incorporate more calcium. Because when you think about it, as you exercise your muscles, muscles are attached to bone and they, you know, as the muscle contracts, it pulls on the bone and that stimulates the bone to get stronger by, you know, uh, incorporating more calcium. So that's actually a very natural, important thing to get more bone strength. So another um, thing that can increase the reabsorption of calcium is vitamin D3. So one of the functions of vitamin D is to reabsorb more calcium. The important thing here is, and uh, I'm going to do more videos about this specifically, but when you take a vitamin supplement like vitamin D3, take it with K2. So the K2, the vitamin K2, helps to redirect this reabsorbed calcium to bone where you want it, rather than it going to places where you don't want it, like for example, your arteries. And so having adequate level of vitamin K2 is important. Vitamin K2 has other functions, you know, it has some anti-cancer properties, it's actually a very good vitamin and we usually don't get enough of it. Um, but there are many supplements that have a combination of vitamin D3 plus K2 in them already. And I would highly recommend to use one of those. Um, none of this, of course, is medical advice. Whether you can eat a high protein diet or you can take supplements like vitamin D is really something that you should discuss with your primary care doctor, of course. Um, but so yeah, overall, high protein diet, very important, um, especially for weight loss. If you wanna keep muscle and you wanna lose fat faster, I always recommend increase the protein. You know, you don't have to go quite as high to the 0 0.8 gram per pound, but even if you get to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, that's great already. And then um, I would not worry about, if you're healthy, about calcium loss, bone loss, it's actually usually the opposite. You know, I think that, you know, when you resistance train and you have a high protein diet, you know, that's actually very good for bone health. So it keeps your bones healthy and also, you know, keeps your lean muscle, uh, uh, you know, mass higher. And these are two factors that are extremely important for your overall health and for longevity.